CDC warnings of a coronavirus pandemic has raised the concerns of American travelers planning to leave the country. KRCG 13's Kyrie Ann Lee today spoke with a travel consultant. She joins us in the studio with information about how that industry is tracking this situation. Well, this is one of the busiest times of year for travel, and for some people, trips out of the country were booked months ago. I spoke with Becky Bowman, owner of Classic Travel and Tours in Jefferson City. She says they are just beginning to see the impact of the coronavirus outbreak. Honestly, it has not slowed down anybody calling to do bookings. It, it, we haven't noticed that yet. Now, if it will, we don't know. Classic Travel and Tours books hundreds of trips for their customers each year from Europe to Alaska to beach trips, you name it. But with the spread of the coronavirus, owner Becky Bowman says some customers with trips out of the country are showing concern. We're handling each case individually. So as they're calling, we're telling them what their options are. We're checking with who we booked the trip through. However, Bowman says they've been given guidance on how to handle the situation from various providers. Every provider that we work with, all the cruise lines, all the tour companies, mm -hmm. they are getting in touch with us because they know we're getting the phone calls. We need to be informed on what to tell our customers. So we go to our websites that they're providing us with the CDC mm -hmm. about the outbreak. And then this is how we are staying in touch. We're all on the same page. Some minor adjustments have been made through this process because safety is the number one priority. If someone was thinking about going there to one of those places that's affected, of course, right now we're gonna, gonna, going to recommend that they choose a different destination. Bowman recommends always getting insurance for every trip because in some cases, trip cancellations for concern or fear of travel associated with sickness, epidemic or pandemic is not covered. Give us a phone call. We'll answer any questions that they have. If we don't have the answer, we'll find the answer. A Michigan judge charged with drunk driving could have gone to jail today for violating bond, but instead is free tonight. David Parrott was arrested earlier this month for domestic violence. 7 and 4's Brittany Beauty was in the courtroom this morning. She has more on what led to the charges and what's next for the Wayne County judge. 59-year-old David Parrott is the 34th district judge in Wayne County. On December 25th, 2018, he was arrested for operating while intoxicated in Manistee County. <laughs> Evidence shows Parrott blew a .10. He was then released on bond for that case. Fast forward to February 8, 2020, officers were called to a home in Van Buren Township for possible domestic violence. She stated that she was pummeled and tackled with a football player. Officer Mike Rennie responded to the call downstate where he says 55-year-old Cindy Peterson reported she was assaulted by David Parrott. Did she say anything else about uh, her relationship with Mr. Parrott? She stated that they've been living together for several years and that this isn't the first time things have been physical. Despite breaking bond conditions for the OWI, the court today did not revoke bail. Considering the main aspects of this, that it's a 93-day misdemeanor, and then if I revoke his bond, he's going to serve more time in jail than he would have even if he would have been convicted just seems too heavy handed in light of a presumption of innocence. When asked if his client violated the public trust. No, it's a human being. Everybody has their foibles. He's fighting the cases. He's asserting his innocence. He's taking a very long look at himself. And I am very pleased to see him take a very long look at himself. With him being a judge, does, is that any advantage to him in this case? Uh, I, you'd have to ask him as far as that goes. Obviously, he's a lawyer first before he's a judge, so he knows the law. Uh, whether that's an advantage or disadvantage or, or another, neither of those, uh, time will tell. Missouri House Democrats have joined with LGBTQ families to denounce Republican-sponsored legislation affecting that community. Minority party leaders say Republican lawmakers want to deprive LGBTQ Missourians of equal treatment and respect under state law. KRCG 13's Mark Slavitt reports from the Capitol. Supporters of LGBTQ families gathered in the Missouri House Lounge to criticize 15 anti-LGBTQ bills sponsored by Republicans. Missouri State University freshman Spencer Stringer is a female to male transgender 
and transitioned about four years ago. Stringer says a Republican House bill banning doctors from giving hormone blockers to children wanting to transition is life-threatening. Blockers are essential, honestly, just for keeping trans people alive. Um, I don't want to sound dramatic, but this is borderline genocide. Rocheport Republican State Representative Chuck Basie is sponsoring a bill that would force public school officials to tell parents about school activities that mention sexual orientation or gender identity. Basie says his bill is in response to complaints from parents at Columbia's Gentry Middle School. They want to their kids to be um, excluded from some type of sexual uh, educational uh, stuff that they ought to have the right to opt their kids out of it. And that's what the bill is designed to do. Kansas City Democrat State Representative Greg Razor is openly gay. Razor is sponsoring the Missouri Non-Discrimination Act, or MONA, that gives legal protections to the LGBTQ community. For the last four years, it's been my honor to, to carry the torch, and I'll continue to carry that torch to make sure that we ban discrimination. This is the 22nd consecutive year that House Democrats have filed the Missouri Non-Discrimination Act. House leaders are not optimistic about passing the legislation this session, but add they will never give up their fight.